My name is Mark Hobbs. Um, as a designer, um, I've worked on a couple of different projects. Um, my main project at the moment is a game called Eden, which is essentially a game about talking to animals and hanging out in the Garden of Eden and learning about good and evil. Uh, my name is Caroline. I'm a game designer and artist. I do watercolor paintings. I got into gaming via the Story Games meetup in Seattle, Washington. With my husband, I've designed a game called One Miss Call, which is a two-player game about two people connecting via phone, either coming together or drifting further apart. And then right now, my current project is called Downfall. It's a three-player game about um, the collapse of a society. My name is Jackson Tegu. I design games. I play music. I am the designer of Silver and White and Kaleidoscope. and. Uh, also, I've uh, made the Monster Hearts second skins. I feel like it's a strong move to start with something, you know. But I think we will come up with some stuff as we go through here. Yeah. Oh my god. You, you think that we might come up with some stuff as we play the game? I don't Is that know. What I just heard? I don't know. It's always happened before, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen this time. I'm ready. You ready? I'm, I'm so ready. ready. Are you ready? I am completely ready. Should we say the thing? Do we, should we have the blood oath? <laughs> First. <laughs> I will listen. I will speak. I will draw the veil if needed. Amen. <laughs> a plus, okay. I'm in. Magic is dying, and the magus is dying with it. We travel together to the realm of Umbra, where magic was born. Fall of Magic is a collaborative story game in the tradition of the fantasy journey, where the landscape, hospitality, and exploration of our characters' relationships and transformations are as important as the action and sword play. We, we begin by choosing a name and title for our characters. Each turn, we choose an area on the map and use the prompt there to inspire the next part of our story. The character of the Magus is shared between us, and on your turn, you may choose to play as the Magus, advancing us along the road to a new place on the map. Okay. Choose your name. Choose one of the names from the list on the map and add it to your note card, and then choose a title from the same list. I'm going to be Kabu. I will choose something besides Kabu then, it seems. That would be wise. Yeah. Okay. Do Kabu, you want to be Kabu? Kabu and Kabu. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not totally hooked on it I'm, if you want I'm just being a jerk. Um, I think I'll be um, either Caspian or River. What are you thinking? I'm going to be Harp. Great. Um, I'll be River. I'm going to be a scholar of Australia. Estalia. Australia. Estalia. <laughs> There's no R. Estalia. Estalia. Okay. River is a uh, a giant of mistwood. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. And I think I'm gonna be an apprentice of Ravenhall. So place a token representing the mages on Ravenhall. This is our starting location. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Who wants to go first? Okay. Um, I, have, I have an idea. I'm going to go to the scrying pool. And the prompt here is why you serve the Magus. Okay, so the scrying pool is um, there's, there's a big like marble hall inside Raven Hall. Um, Raven Halls, I suppose. There are many halls. And this particular hall is, is kind of this big, expansive, empty room with cold, black granite floor and these sort of like tall columns, kind of circular, kind of all the way around. And in the center of the space is a little basin up on like a thin column. And it's made of a blue stone. Uh, it looks a little bit like a lapis. And inside the basin is just crystal clear water. And at first, when you approach the scrying pool and you look into it, you don't see anything. But if you have magical inclination, if you have some kind of ability, you will begin to see these little wispy trails of, of white kind of smoke beneath the surface of the water. And the longer that you stare into it and you, you, you 
sort of focus your energy on what you want to see, what you want to scry. And if you have magic, you can see it. And so Kabu goes to the scrying pool and, um, and she leans over the pool and begins to stare into it. And at first it's very hazy, but as, um, as she continues to linger there, um, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour goes by where she's just staring into this pool. And finally, finally, she catches just a little glimpse of this smoky image, and it's from her past, and it's showing her the day that the Magus took her on as his apprentice. Um, she was traveling with a caravan um, just as a young, young girl, and he was in the same town, and um, the scene that she sees is the moment when he, when he stopped her and he did this conjuring trick and he pulled this coin out, and then he sort of made the coin uh, vanish, and she was so impressed. And then she said, how'd you do that? And he said, it's magic. And she said, no, it's a trick. And he said, Magic's, uh, magic and tricks are very much alike. Would you like to learn? And she said, yes. And he said, then come with me. And so she did. And that's what she sees in the scrying pool. And she doesn't know why. As I was rolling through, you know, I, I had apprentice, but I was like, well, I got to think about how did I become the apprentice? And am I, am I the only apprentice? You know, like lots of different questions there kind of coming through. But I was thinking as I was speaking. And so uh, what suddenly came to me while I was talking about the scrying pool was, oh, she's been this apprentice for a long time, you know, she's, since, since she was a child. And maybe this is still, still really hard to do magic. Um, so Harp goes to the Menagerie, which is a collection of um, devices hmm. from around the realm. Mm -hmm. And as he's walking through, he stops by the medical display, a display of different medical utensils that they use um, in different places. And there's a lot of variety. But he stops and he reflects to himself about a time when he was traveling in the Oak Hills and he saw um, someone fall from their horse, get a broken leg. And luckily there was a doctor coming by and the doctor set the leg and the person eventually made it safely to Barleytown. And that was the last time that Harp saw real magic. Huh. <laughs> Strong move. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing down. All right, well, we'll see. Shouldn't plan too far ahead, but Mark's character was really excited about magic being about um, trickery and illusion and sort of, um, I could tell that, well, I could sense maybe and maybe not, um, that his character was going to go in a more uh, magic is fantastical sort of way. So I wanted as the scholar to um, provide a counterpoint to that, where magic is something that's very much grounded in um, the actual world and doing things that are you know, useful instead of pulling a coin out of someone's hat. Caroline, Caroline did a really awesome thing with that, kind of setting up this character who is really and she didn't have to say it, but it's so obvious that her character is opposed to magic or doesn't believe in magic or kind of sees... Uh, she, she's got this sort of scientific looking character as far as I can tell already. And so I feel like her character and mine are going to be butting heads a lot over, no, it's magic, no, it's science, no, it's, you know, we can study this, no, it's inscrutable, you know, like that kind of thing. So I thought that was awesome. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. I'm really hoping that... Um his character pushes more of that uh, fantastic magic angle and I can do more of the um, grounded reality angle of magic. I mean, honestly, they are just like an amazing power couple that do amazing things. They're both like really, really remarkable humans. So uh, I am super lucky to be playing with both of them. So uh, the Rose Gardens of Raven Hall. You were saying that there's many different halls, and uh, one of them has just been completely overgrown by these like 
know, like twining, twirling rose bushes, mm -hmm. um, some of which have um, like brambles that are like a couple of feet thick. Like they're really, really huge, giant scale. It's there that a river is wandering. And I think there's floors of them, and some of the floors can't be accessed anymore because they've just been like completely overgrown by these like gorgeous and beautiful um, roses. From one of the higher windows, um, river crouching to be able to better see out the window, sees harp. Uh, through maybe the glass domed roof of the menagerie. River thinks to themselves, this is Raven Hall. This is like the epicenter of, of so much. Like here, uh, the Magus is like bringing these people together. Certainly there are like numerous locals or people from really close, but people have come so far and not only people, but like the great scholar Harp who, you know, groves of mist would you know, we would tell stories that of like Harp's great exploits and like understandings and discoveries. Yeah, the river's just like uh, a little taken aback at the scope and majesty of the journey before them. Uh, so I want to give you plus legendary. Sweet. That's supposed to be plus one legendary. <laughs> so this is a trait. So this is a story prompt with a plus symbol or traits. After describing the scene, select one of the traits listed and describe how that is true about one of the characters. Then write that trait down on their note card. It's kind of big, I hope you know. <laughs> That's cool. I'm Legend. super legendary. Wait for it. Dairy. <laughs> That's something else, a legendary. It has to do with cows. Mm -hmm. I've played this game several times and I've never played the giant before or seen anyone play it. Uh, so in that way it's fun because I'm like, oh cool, I, I've not seen an interpretation of this before. I have a tendency to uh, gradually step into a character, so I, I really have no idea what their deal is. Uh, entering it uh, pretty wide-eyed wide as a low status character gives me a lot of room to move around though, so that's fun. Still some some mysteries about the giant, you know, like, why is the giant here? Why is the giant coming with us? What do giants do? Are they scary? Is this a nice giant that's an exception, or is this just kind of a normal giant, you know? And then Jackson's character um, gave me Legendary, which is fantastic, and I'm kind of, I'm on the fence right now about whether I want to act in a way that deserves that recognition from his character River, or in a way that uh, kind of destroys that reputation. Yeah, I chose to go to the Rose Garden. I mean, I think that it's really fun, you know, like splash onto other people's characters a little bit, and that's a cool mechanic that lets you do that. Okay. So now since everybody's uh, laid down, you may move the Mage's token, is that how it works? I may. Okay. And I will. <gasps> so everybody... I'll make it do, go along do the gotta, yeah. it? Okay, I'll make it walk. Yeah. yeah. Very nice, very, very nice. Don't, don't use that clip though. We can do it in a cooler way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna practice rolling it so it just kind of Oh, okay. that would be good. <laughs> so Mark, after moving the mages, remove the other characters' tokens from the map. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And describe the location and story prompt from the perspective of the mages. Okay. The Oak Hills are a small region of sweeping foothills um, just at the base of an impregnable mountain passes. Um, in fact, Ravenhall sits at higher elevation and then you sort of descend a little and come back up this sort of really sudden steep incline to these mountains. The only way around is to continue south to Barley Town and then on. And so um, here in the Oak Hills, the trees are um, just beginning to turn um, at the ending of summer. And um, they are still mostly green, but a few of the trees have started to change already. This year, in fact, there's been a particularly uh, rough bout of weather, which has, has caused some of the plants to start going earlier than they would. And I, uh, 
um, I, I observe this happening all around me and I think about how my own youth was taken from me, how I myself was once an apprentice to Amagus, and now I have my own apprentice, how time is funny that something I never thought would happen, that I would grow old, has suddenly snuck up on me, and I may be entering the ending of my summer, but I don't know, maybe I'm not. And so we begin down the long, winding dirt trail that leads through the Oak Hills to Barley Town. When you are the first person to play the Magus, you basically set the tone for the Magus for the rest of the game. It sticks with them, and especially if you introduce anything really major or overarching about the Magus, that is going to stand out. Like, I introduced the whole, oh, the Magus is getting older, the Magus is worried about mortality, the Magus was an apprentice. Nobody can, can kind of negate those now, um, which is simultaneously a lot of power for me, but also a lot of pressure, because what if they don't like it, you know? I, I just want to kind of create something that's open enough, but still going in a direction that I think is interesting. At first light, Harp is sitting um, atop a rock where there's a slight clearing in the trees um, so that the light can get through as he reads from a scroll. Um, it has a map of the Oak Hills and then it has history starting from thousands of years ago, recorded history of what's happened in this area. Um, I think either Kabu or River is there too. I'll be there. Does anybody want to walk up? Okay. Kabu comes out um, of the, are you like, where, where were you sitting? I'm sitting on a rock, and there's some sun coming down. Okay. Got Kabu, a big scroll. Kabu comes out of, of the trees behind you and, um, and kind of comes up, and um, I think Kabu is a little shorter than you. Totally. Yeah, and so, um, so she kind of like kind of has to lean way up. And she's kind of looking at the scroll, and she says, what, what is that? Oh, this is an account of all the summers in the Oak Hills, mm. coming back many, many years. Is, how old is Kabu? Mm. 17. Oh, wow, okay. Harp is older by a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Harp's legendary. Yeah. Yeah, but Kabu... Kabu's never heard of him. Well, well until now, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, no, she, she heard of him, but she doesn't know very much. Right. Certainly no stories like in, in Mistwood. So she says, well, how did they, how do you know, who, who wrote down the history? Where did it all come from? Um, scholars for ages have come through the hills to Ravenhall and recorded their journeys. Hmm. This is um, a compilation of their records in condensed form. Hmm. I like to, and he sort of like gets a far off scholarly look. He's not really talking to you anymore, just talking to himself. I really enjoy when I'm traveling to read about the places where I am. I think it brings me um, a greater understanding for where I am now and what has come before me. Hmm. That's cool. Do you have scrolls like this for lots of places? Well, yes, for any place where I've been. What about places you haven't been? I try, um, but then again, who knows where they will go that they haven't been. True, true. So, so then when you read about the history, like, does that help you decide what to do next, where you're going to go? And he frowns a little bit, um, and um, says, well, I'm, in a way, I'm beholden to the mages. I'm going with him. The books don't tell me, don't help me decide where to go next. I kind of feel like 
I'm going with the flow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's something interesting that happened here? I mean, I see in the scroll, <laughs> there's a part here, there was a, there was a battle here, like, like 300 years ago. Is that what I'm, is that right? Yes, it says um, 200 from Barley Town were killed in the battle with Raven Hall. And she's kind of like, wait, they, they were at war? They fought? Can you tell me more? Can you, can you read, read some of the scroll to me? Um, and he goes on to describe how Ravenhall had um, at one point been a conquering kingdom and had tried to conquer Barleytown, but the resistance of Barleytown had driven um, the soldiers from Ravenhall back into the Oak Hills um, where there had been one final fight. Barleytown was outnumbered to a significant degree and lost many, many soldiers, but their resistance kept Raven Hall at bay. I mean, she's but this isn't sort of this isn't old history. This is only ninety years ago. Oh, you should huh. know this. Well, um, they never told me about it <laughs> at Raven Hall, so interesting. I don't know. Um, anyway, do you want breakfast or? I'll read for a few uh, more hours. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll see you later. <laughs> cool. Sorry. <laughs> Say something interesting. <laughs>